when you're onto your internal medicine rotation and they're asking you to list differentials for whatever symptom and you're onto like your 25th differential, never forget psychiatric causes of symptoms, okay? So if you're stuck on listing differentials and your attending is still wanting more, you can always talk about psychiatric causes of symptoms. And we're gonna talk about some here. We're gonna talk about faking symptoms and then we're gonna talk about actual symptoms that don't really have a physiological or physical cause. It's due to a psychological cause, a psychiatric cause. That's why we're talking in this block. All right, so we're gonna talk about faking symptoms first. So faking symptoms or feigning illness, these include things like malingering. Malingering is faking a, a symptom or sickness for an external gain. The classic one is workers' compensation where someone will pretend they're injured to get workers' comp or someone will pretend they're injured to get opiates, et cetera, et cetera. So external gain is the name of the game. Now someone can fake symptoms, not for external gain, but more for attention seeking behavior. To play the role of a patient to get care from someone else, we call that factitious disorder or being factitious. And that's just faking symptoms, not for external gain, but for attention seeking behavior. For now this could be a one off thing, but if it becomes chronic, we call it Munchinson syndrome. So this is just a chronic form of fictitious disorder. Something else you should know is Munchausen syndrome. By proxy, you can probably guess by the name what that is. This is when instead of a person faking illness, a person will say another person is ill. Commonly seen in caregivers. So the caregiver will not say they're sick, but they'll say, oh, my son is sick. Yeah, they'll fake illnesses on someone else by proxy, that's the by proxy part. And then demand tests, demand all this stuff. And the dead giveaway is if you separate the two, if you separate the caregiver and the person they're taking care of, then suddenly the person's all better, yeah? Yeah, the person's not actually sick. Okay, so that's a dead giveaway. And that is all faking symptoms. Now, that's faking symptoms. You can also have actual symptoms, not from, again, physiological or organic causes, it's from psychological causes. So I'll just write actual symptoms. But this group is formally called somatoform disorders. You can have something called somatization. This is when you have symptoms, but it spans multiple systems, multiple organs. So I'll say many symptoms, many organs. And that's all I have to say about that. You can have something called conversion disorder. This is when you convert a psychological stressor into a physical symptom. You convert, that's the conversion part of it. This can be seen, I actually heard a story about someone, a hunter who was hunting for the first time, saw a deer, tried to shoot it, but arm suddenly went limp. That's a very classical sign of a stressor that turns your arm paralyzed or limb paralyzed or you unable to move. Very common. So I'll say stressor converts to physical. And another dead giveaway is that they don't seem concerned about this symptom. If you imagine if your arm suddenly went limp and you couldn't move it at all, you'd be at the ED. But these patients don't really seem concerned. They'll just walk around with one limp arm and then suddenly it'll spontaneously resolve, never come back. Those are all dead giveaways of conversion disorder. Next up, hypochondriasis, more commonly just referred to as being a hypochondriac. This is when you have a symptom and you, you're sure it's due to some underlying disease. If you have a cough, you're sure it's due to lung cancer. And you go in and you're demanding all these tests, these tests all come back negative, but you don't care, you're sure, you're positive that your symptom is due to a disease. So symptom due to a disease. And it usually causes a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. This doesn't actually make sense, symptom due to disease. Um, patient is sure symptom is due to a disease. That's hypochondriasis or being a hypochondriac. Next up, pain disorder. 
Pain disorder is when there's a psychological stressor, but instead of converting into, I guess, a focal physical sign, it just converts to this diffuse pain that really can't be put in the words, yeah? And because this pain is an actual physical pain, normal analgesics don't really work as well as things like therapy, things like SSRI, that's an important giveaway. So they'll have a history of some sort of traumatic event or stressor, so history of stressor, and it converts into this form of pain. Pain. And it's better treated with things like therapy. Yeah, you're focusing on that psychological cause. Yeah, this is the name of the game, we're in the psych block, so it shouldn't surprise you. That's pain disorder. And last but not least, we have pseudocystis. This is when this is when a woman suffers symptoms like abdominal bloating, nausea, and vomiting. These are very common. And it's positively sure that she is pregnant. So it's a false belief of pregnancy. So I'll write false belief of pregnancy. Very common there are cases where a lady will come in, says, you know, I'm pregnant, I'm going through all these symptoms. You do a beta ACG, you'll do an ultrasound, nothing's there. Or even, even more serious, the person will come in and say to the ER and say, my water broke, I'm delivering right now. A ton of people rush in, realize, hey, you're not pregnant at all, and the lady will just leave. And so that's pseudocyesis. What is the common theme of all of these? Is that they'll talk about someone with these symptoms and all the tests and everything, every history, every investigation, all the tests are gonna be normal, yeah? And then after that, then you can start thinking, okay, maybe there's psych causes. After you've exhausted everything, these are not common things, yeah, but there's something you have to keep in the back of your mind after you've exhausted everything, always think of these. All right, so when you're on your 25th differential, when you're doing your IM rotation, think of these. That does it for this video, see you next time.